the viewpoint on gay footballers was such kind of like a Stone Age view. Football is a game for everyone, so why should there be any differences for anybody? In order to be a good role model, it's kind of understanding the influence that you can have on not just kids, but everyone who looks up to you and is setting the right examples and setting them, if, if they're going to follow you, setting them on the right pathway to how you want the world to kind of look. Campaigns like the Barclays Community Football Fund and Rainbow Laces, the main influence is raising awareness. Getting people comfortable to talk about it becomes more of a popular theme, then people feel more comfortable in that kind of situation. It keeps growing and growing and growing and then you see the big changes, maybe years down the line, but it has to start somewhere. I know the power of football and how it can change lives. In 2014, I came out and embarked upon a journey where I wanted to make football a more inclusive place. I'm here at Leeds meeting a couple of special individuals who are doing just that, changing the lives of LGBT plus people. Patrick, good to see Hi. you. How's things? Not too bad. This is home for you. This is where all the hard work happens. Yeah, well, especially during COVID. This is where literally everything was, so yeah. I've got to say, first of all, I've got so much respect and admiration for you. Just talking about the LGBT plus community. Yeah. As a Premier League footballer, you, you wouldn't believe it, but there's not many that would have the courage to do it. For me, like a big thing is I want to use my platform for something that's like to make change and to make change for the, for the better, really. People should feel comfortable going to watch a football game no matter what their sexual orientation is or their race, ethnicity, religion or anything. What's the dialogue in the dressing room like when it comes to the Rainbow Laces campaign? Is it still a bit... Mm, yeah. Do you know what? It's, it's changed a lot because I remember probably the first when the Rainbow Laces came out, people were like saying, oh, no, I don't want to wear them. I don't want to wear them. Really? Because, but not because they weren't supporting of it. I think more because of they were scared like, oh, if people see me wearing them, are they going to think I'm gay? And it wasn't about that. So... I think now, from where that was, I've seen people just put them in their boots, no one said anything. It's not making a big thing of it, which I think is almost crucial. Like Sometimes making a big thing of things doesn't make it normal, if you know what I mean. And we need to make it kind of accepted and it just is normal and should be taken as so. I was scared about coming out. I was yeah. scared about football and the world of football knowing who I, who I was. Yeah. How would you react to that? What would that make you feel if you, if you knew that I was so scared to be myself? I understand it, to be fair, because football's always been described as a man's game. Like, and how wrong is that now, now in today's kind of world that it really is it's a game for everyone. Like supporting it, playing in it, being in the industry. It doesn't matter whether you're a girl, a guy, or what your sexual orientation is. If one of the lads in the changing room was gay and, and came up to me and said that he was gay, it wouldn't make a difference at all. I think now everyone's just, they want to win on a Saturday. So when they're going onto the pitch, they're not going to think, oh, hang on a minute. He's just told me he's gay. That doesn't change anything. He's still footballers. He's still trying to get the same end result. So really, what's the difference? Yeah, it's amazing to, to hear that as well. And it sounds so silly to say something so simple, but yeah. means so much. The fact that like someone who's not part of the LGBTQT community can stand up and talk about it in support of them, I think then that kind of shows how powerful the message can be. I'm Martin, I look after the Rainbow Youth Centre, which is a charity that specifically looks to help young members of the LGBTQI community. We're here to try and create that safe space where they can come down and find a friend, join a club, learn a skill, play football or sports, but just simply accepting somebody for who they are. And that's all you really need. It's all literally that's what it comes down to. And it's just the confidence that they get when they come here after a few weeks. And it's just purely because, you know, they're surrounded by positive adults who believe in them in an environment that's encouraging, you know, has no agendas or no preconceived notions of who they are or who they should be. It just lets them be whoever it is they want to be. My youngest came out to me about two years ago and wanted to take part in a youth center. So I told them that we would, you know, try to find one, but I didn't know if there was anything like that around. But luckily, just around that time is when Martin had set up the Rainbow Center, started coming to some of his first events, and it's had a massive impact. It's meant the world to me. Until you go through it, you don't know what it's like to have a child that struggles with their mental health. And when your child is saying things that, about wanting to hurt themselves or things like that, and it just, it tears you apart. But having the support of the Rainbow Center and the community that's been created here, oh, 
I just, I, I don't have words. It's just meant the world to us. With the Barclays Community Football Fund, we use that to help us to continue doing the work that we do. And every little bit we do it goes towards building the confidence of the young people that comes through the door. The centres like these need to, to survive uh, because we are as well working together as a community. I don't think they will. Martin Patrick, Patrick Martin. Hi, mate. Hi Patrick. Nice no, to meet you. Nice to meet you. Tell Patrick a little bit about what you've done. Uh, my son came out to us as being trans uh, and he'd suffered with mental health issues. And we tried to find um, support for him and we couldn't. So we looked around for a while and after a couple of years we decided that we'd try and do something ourselves. Interest in it was such that it was an obvious need for it. Mm. It's unbelievable the difference it's made. I think what you've done is massive and I think that you've shown that it can be done. So now there's no reason why it can't happen elsewhere in the country as well because Guaranteed it's not just in Blackburn that needs that kind of support system. What do you think that the kids, especially at the youth centre, would kind of like to, to see from people like me and people who are willing to speak out on the subject? What you're doing now already and the way that you offer acceptance of other people who do come out shows it's a mainstream thing. It's not something that should be hidden away. The more that celebrities and people like yourselves say that, you know, yeah, everything's fine, it's fine to be LGBTQI. You know, it doesn't change who you are and there's nothing bad about it whatsoever. You know, that they're to be able to look at the TV and go, look at that, it, apparently it's perfectly fine now, which would be a really good day. I think it'd be nice to spend some time with marching out together and actually do less talking and more playing. Having Patrick Bamford as an ally makes a huge difference to us. We can all talk about how it feels for us, but when you've got straight players saying, it's okay, it's fine to be gay, it's absolutely huge. And I've noticed it on the terraces. I've noticed people being aware more of their language, and that's fantastic. Once March Out Together kind of partnered with the club, the players all showed their support, and they said themselves that that like, enabled them as a, as a group to grow and to feel more comfortable. They're getting more fans now in the stadium coming down to Ellen Road. And I think that without the players' support, that probably wouldn't have happened, or it might have happened, but not as quickly. Sometimes being an ally is you don't always have to do something, but it's just knowing as a team, we're all there behind them. So Martin, we've done a lot of talking about the impact that Barclays have made, and you've given me some nice insights into this, this football pitch you've got at the back of your youth centre. I think you need to, to take me down, Martin, and show me a little bit more. So here it is. Yeah, this is a Rebel Youth Centre here in Darwin. We're the only LGBTQI club centre of, of its kind in the entire country. And when you look at the impact that your work and your team's work has on the, the young people you engage with on a weekly basis, you must be flabbergasted that there isn't more of these around the country. It is, it's, it's kind of strange. And as well, when we talk about it with other people, they can't believe that there isn't other services like ourselves, which is why we're trying to grow from encouraging them to play football on the AstroSurf pitch. It helps to boost who they are and how the hidden abilities they have comes through. And without the money that we got for the Barclays Community Football Fund, that wouldn't have been possible. To move things forward, what could be done? What would you like football to do to try and help change and build upon the good work that you've done already? I think more of um, the support that people like Patrick Bamford offer us. I mean, it's only when um, big names like Patrick, uh, who put their weight behind it and their support behind it, do we see um, changes uh, at a bigger level. Here we can try and encourage the young people to find themselves in football. My son who comes down here sometimes, he'll wear four inch heels and play football. I love Are they not stilettos, I mean like platforms, like they're like this, yeah. and then boots up to here. And they do it because they have that encouragement and that, that acceptance of being able to do it in a safe place where they can be whoever it is they want to be. The key message is be yourself, be comfortable in your skin, uh, and, and enjoy this environment and uh, I think it's just truly incredible what you've done. A lot of people will probably say that well me doing something is not going to make a massive difference and one person doing it is probably not so they're probably right but I think then when you get a lot of people doing a little thing it starts to make a bigger difference down the line. It really is just about kind of raising awareness because as I said things aren't going to change overnight but it's getting people comfortable to talk about it, getting people to feel comfortable in that environment, and then further down the line, you'll see big changes.